Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving a trigonometric equation. More accurately, an inverse trigonometric equation. So, at this point, if you want, pause the video and try this problem first. All right, so we have sine inverse of x multiplied by cosine inverse of x being equal to pi squared over 18, and we're supposed to solve for x. By the way, when I say sine inverse, I'm not talking about the reciprocal, I'm talking about the inverse function here. So sine inner inverse of x means the angle, and of course it needs to be a certain range, the angle whose sine is equal to x. Okay, cool. So how do we solve this problem? Well, as always, we're going to take advantage of a very powerful method here, which is called substitution, right? But before we use substitution, we kind of need to relate sine inverse and cosine inverse, and they are related. How are they related? Well, that's fairly easy. Sine inverse of x plus cosine inverse of x is equal to pi over 2. Why? Because if you think about two complementary angles, the angle whose sine is x and the angle whose cosine is x, they're going to be complementary angles. You can draw a right triangle and see that this is true. Awesome. Now, this is nice because this allows me to replace sine inverse with something else. So let's go ahead and do that. I am going to isolate sine inverse of x and write it as pi over 2 minus cosine inverse of x. Beautiful. Now, in my equation, I do have sine inverse of x, so let's go ahead and do that replacement. It's going to give me pi over 2 minus cosine inverse of x multiplied by cosine inverse of x. And when this looks like a t, sideways t, I really don't like that. I guess that's kind of like an obsession maybe. Okay, so that's the cosine inverse of x. Multiply by cosine inverse of x again, which is cool. Now we have a single variable. But that's not the end of the story because we still have to use substitution. How do we use substitution? Well, we can just go ahead and replace cosine inverse of x with another variable, say y. And then we should be getting pi over 2 minus y, and you know y, right? Equals pi squared over 18. If you distribute, you get pi over 2 y minus y squared is equal to pi squared over 18. Now, you need to remember that pi is a constant. It's a number, just like 5, 2, negative 3, right? It just looks different. Yes, it is a number. It's a constant. So... We do get a quadratic equation here then, right? Don't we? Let's put everything on the right-hand side, which makes the y squared positive, and kind of negate the y, and then just add pi squared over 18 and set the whole thing equal to zero. Beautiful. Now, we do have a quadratic, and obviously we can solve it, right? Because there is a formula. Unfortunately, there's no formula for the quintic and above, but there's a formula for cubic. You don't want to know. There's one for quartic, uh, again, that's complicated. But quadratic formula is nice. I mean, relatively nice, right? So, but we don't need to do that even because this equation is factorable. How? Well, if you consider the fact that, or if you knew it, pi over 3 and pi over 6 add up to pi over 2 because it's kind of like 30 plus 60 equals 90, right? That's true. But not only that, if you multiply them, that's kind of interesting, isn't it? If you multiply them, you get pi squared over 18. So if you look at this carefully, you have it, right? But here's the thing. In order to be able to factor this, I do need to find two numbers whose product is, yes, pi squared over 18, but whose sum needs to be a negative pi over 2. So how do I handle that? Well, pick two negative numbers. Their product is still going to be positive. Therefore, the factors of the constant here are negative pi over 3, and negative pi over 6. All right, cool. And that tells me, and of course, their sum is negative pi over 2, needless to say, right? That tells me that this equation can be factored as y minus pi over 3 multiplied by y minus pi over 6. And the whole thing is equal to 0. Awesome. Now, can we solve this? Absolutely. Uh, by using the zero product property, or whatever you want to call that, set each factor equal to zero, and you get y equals pi over 3, 
and y equals pi over 6. Awesome, beautiful, magnificent, right? We were able to find the value of y. But we're not, we're not looking for y. And then we're like, why? Well, we're looking for x, right? What is x? Okay, we got to go back, substitute. What is x equal to? x does not equal anything, but cosine inverse of x is equal to y. Let's go ahead and use that. So this equals cosine inverse of x, and this equals cosine inverse of x. Again, I made a sideways t. I'm going to fix that. Because awesome. Now, what do I have? Okay. My goal is to find x, so we're almost there. Cosine inverse of x equals pi over 3. Remember what I told you about cosine inverse of x? Cosine inverse of x means the angle whose cosine is x. So this means cosine x is equal to pi over 3, and x needs to be an acute angle, right? And this means cosine x needs to be pi over 6. But don't get me wrong, these are different x values. So you can call them x1 and x2 if you want. I won't. Okay, so here's my solutions. The first solution that I get from here, so the question is, cosine of which angle is equal to pi over 3, right? Okay. Uh, by the way, I, I don't think I got this right. Okay, there's a mistake here. What is going on? Okay, okay, I just realized that it's not cosine of x. It's cosine of pi over 3. Okay, there you go. Cosine of pi over 3 is equal to x, and cosine of pi over 6 is equal to x. Okay, cool. Now, so what is x equal to? Cosine of pi over 3. Pi over 3 is like 60. Cosine 60 is sine 30. That's 1 half. Awesome. So x is equal to 1 half. What about this one? Cosine of pi over 6. Pi over 6 is like 30. Cosine 30 is what? Root 3 over 2. That's it. We got it. So we found the x values. Yay. Happy ending. Which means that we got the answer, right? So these are the answers. We have two solutions. We have two solutions to this equation. And the solutions are 1 half and square root of 3 over 2, which are basically the solutions of this original equation. All right. Awesome. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video and I try to keep it short. I'll see you tomorrow with a geometry puzzle. Until then, take care, be safe, and bye-bye.